Hi everyone, this is Plan Free. My name is Eric. I'm Lori. We're coming back at you with another video the year after we lived in Sierpe, Costa Rica. In this video, we remember the time we escaped another Canadian winter and lived in Panama for six months. We flew into Panama City at the beginning of rainy season. On our way to another house sitting arrangement on a farm halfway up a volcano road, but before we end up there, we decided to take a couple of days in Panama City. We had two must-see locations. One was the canal. So the Panama Canal being one of the wonders of the world man-made, even though I wasn't particularly interested in it, Lori was, thank goodness, and uh, we went and saw it, and it is a mechanical marvel. It's pretty awesome when you go and see it firsthand. And the second was Casco Viejo. Casco Viejo is Spanish for old quarter, and it was pretty cool. It had all the old crumbling buildings, but it also was a fully functional business and restaurant district. Very lively, really worthwhile for an afternoon. Now that we're finished taking in those couple of attractions in Panama City, it was time to fly to the city of David and on to our house sit. The location of the farm that we agreed to take care of was northeast of the city of David, up via Volcan Road. I remember the first morning we woke up at the farm to be presented with a six foot long Fair de Lance pit viper by one of the farm staff. An exciting start to the stay and it was a sign of things to come. There was a lot of adventure to be had around there. The farm was offset from the main road so it was secluded from everything else. It was a peaceful place to live. Part of the house sit arrangement was that we were going to care for the entire farm of 15 acres, which included some farm staff that we were going to work with and supervise. When we arrived, we were greeted by a handful of large dogs, around seven, and they were to become our closest family for the next six months. So much like kids, each of them had different personalities, behaviors, mannerisms. Essentially, it was a pack of shenaniganizers. So it was shenanigans ongoing with these dogs. Escapees. Yeah, anything from we'd have to separate all of their bowls because one dog wouldn't want to eat their food. The other <laughs> dog would want to eat everyone's food. Some of the dogs were super friendly and cuddly. The other dogs would run away from you when they first saw you. But after a short time, we would move as a family unit, no problems. <laughs> Pro tip, when you're caring for a large group of dogs, it's very important to give the dogs equal amount of love, spread it around evenly. And I like to think I did a pretty good job of that. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Early on in our stay, one of the staff at the farm came to us with this little worm infested few week old puppy and asked us if we would foster it. He didn't take care of it until he could find an owner for it. We of course agreed. That's when Pepper came on the scene. So we apologize for the hijack of this video, but there's going to be a little bit of Pepper time coming. Yeah, she was our second jungle love right after Sorrel from Costa Rica. And after you care for a little sweetheart who's ill, doesn't feel good, you have to give her a bath, you fall in love. I remember the first few weeks we had Pepper, she was working through her medication that we bought for her and getting healthy. Essentially, all she did was sleep and grow. The odd time she'd wake up and do her baby shark routine on us and bite us and then fall back asleep. When she first came on the scene, all of the big dogs didn't accept her right away. After a while, she'd get right in there and she'd be biting ankles and playing like a big dog. And the other dogs eventually accepted her into the family and grew to love her. When we showed up in Panama, it was their rainy season. Sometimes it would pour hard for two, three days in a row. Around the end of January, the rainy season would be over. After a few days of drying out, it was time to get out in the yard. Just like we did in Sierpe in the Costa Rican jungle the year before, we enjoyed getting out there. And we spent quite a bit of time out in the yard with the dogs usually. Sometimes we'd be doing all of the above at the same time. Burning a fire, playing with the dogs, listening to a hockey game on the speaker, having a few cocktails, just enjoying the surrounding area. Spending so much time in the yard like we did, still being in a jungle, we would come across a lot of wildlife on the farm. Anything from insects. The way the YouTube 
these algorithms work these days, it really helps us out a lot. Spiders. Snakes, of course. Possums. Crabs. Yeah. On the bird front, this is a bird nerd paradise. I set up a little customized bird feeding platform where we would place fruits on there and it would bring in the birds from far and wide. So awesome. We didn't get any toucans specifically in Panama, but we got pretty much everything else from paracaries, motmots, small, very colorful songbirds, to a bunch of things we had no idea what they were. Multiple species of hummingbirds, bird nerd hip. Show up in the height of rainy season because that's when all of the hummingbirds were in the area. We put up five or six feeders. There'd be so many hummingbirds at the feeders that they would empty them all in about three days. So we were constantly rotating and cleaning and filling hummingbird feeders. From memory, I believe we were getting around seven to eight different species, which in all of our travels, that's probably the most different species in one location that we'd ever viewed. And when the rain tapered off, so did the hummingbird business, and they went to almost nothing once the dry season started. Yeah. Dispersed on the farm was many trees, but they were fruit bearing, a variety of citrus, oranges, lemons, limes, guanabana, sour soft in North America. Here in Indonesia, they call it searsack. I just call it delicious. We had papayas, bananas, avocados, passion fruit. We had a variety of different food items. So it was fun for us to walk around and collect these. There was a river down at the bottom of the property. So the river that bordered two corners of the 15 acre property would flow um, quite heavily and it rounded a corner and it was incredible. You could get into that corner of the river and swim like it was one of those endless pools. We would have a snorkel, a mask, and we went in there. There was cichlids in this freshwater river. It was really a good spot. We spent a lot of time down this river on the property. We would walk the dogs down there pretty well every day, sometimes twice a day. And uh, good some of the boy, dogs dog. were going in the water. Some of the dogs good sort boy, of worked their way into it after a while. Yeah, but we would go down there and um, just sort of goof off and socialize as a family regularly. It was a beautiful spot to be. Uh, so we good could boy, throw sticks for the dogs. We could swim, like Lori mentioned. There was several that fish stick? that you could see in the river. Good boy. Nice, clear, fresh water. And it was an ooh, excellent ooh, little ooh. built in ooh. recreation site on the farm. The dogs would get really hot midday. It was the perfect time to go down, and everyone gets a nice little dunk. Mm. The dogs were better behaved if they got their walk. As is pretty standard with us at Plan 3, we're almost always away from Canada for Christmas, living in another country. And we were shown some kindness by a Panamanian family, and they included us in their both their Christmas dinner and their New Year's celebration. Um, Lori and I had decided to purchase a car for between four and 5,000 US. A little while later, she came driving into the farmyard in a puff of blue smoke. Again, she got out of the car with the hugest smile ever. Honey! Honey, I got this one for 1600 US. And man, it looked like it. It was a certifiable POS, but we were happy to have wheels. What this car did do for us though, is it gave us the freedom to look at some of the other parts of the country on the short breaks that we were able to take in between the house sitting duties. The beach was a fair distance off. I think it took us about 45 minutes. It was amazing how much hotter it was down at sea level than it was where we were living. The beaches were pretty well wide open. There wasn't a lot of people around. It was able to take us into the nearest city of David, which again was about 40, 45 minutes. We could do things like go to the gym. Sometimes we would head the other way, being up the Volcan Road. One of the attractions we took in one day was a place called Jansen Coffee Farm. And that was very interesting because it was a family run operation of coffee roasters and growers, beautiful property, very relaxing cafe where you could order their coffee fresh. Just have a relaxing time looking out over a beautiful view. The car also allowed us to explore a town called Volcan. Cool name. So we popped into a gym there, we'd go out for dinner, 
cake from Pepper for a, a socializing walk. Go buy yogurt and cheese from a local dairy farm. One time we got really excited, we being Lori, and we decided let's drive up over the mountain pass, the highest point in Panama, over to the Caribbean side, and let's visit the Bocas del Toro region. Off we go with this little beater. First, we can't see a darn thing. It starts to cloud over, and then a couple sprinkles, and pretty soon, literally, we could not see more than 10 feet in front of the car. Pretty scenic up and over there. The temperature dropped. You were looking for your jacket. We traveled over some beautiful highways and belt and jungles, and eventually arrived at a place called El Mirante parked our car. After a short boat ride, we arrived at Bocas Town on Isla Colon, and this is a touristy little town with an energetic vibe. We had uh, dinner over top of the street one night and just took in the energy of the place. Lori was able to find us an excellent Airbnb about a five minute walk off the main road, which was very quiet and tranquil as opposed to the action that was going on out front. A couple of the things we did in Bocas del Toro area, one time we grabbed a bus to a place called Starfish Beach. You walk past a few houses, come to a very small path, spills out onto this beach, which was pretty in itself. We remember swimming out a little ways and then diving down maybe about 15 feet with our snorkel gear and it really was Starfish Beach. Once you got down to the bottom of the ocean, there were these orange starfishes all over the place. Another day tour we took, Red Frog Beach. And like its namesake, there were awesome red frogs there. It was on another island called Isla Bascomiento. We took about a 10 minute walk and arrived at the other side, which was a place called Wizard Beach. Lori likes to call it $20 Beach because I walked into the water with a $20 bill in my swimsuit and I walked out of the water without a $20 bill in my swimsuit. So. Yeah, I was making it rain. One of our first winters away, we lived in Hawaii. We have a video on that you can check out. But one of the Airbnb hosts there turned into a good friend. And it came time in Panama where we could reciprocate the kindness that he showed us. We invited him and his now family, his wife and children down to Panama to visit with us and they enjoyed a little bit of a holiday. They hit the ground running. We did so much in about three or four days. Here goes. One of the first things we did together was that we arranged a boat to take us out and fish. By memory, I'm not sure we even caught anything or much, but we did enjoy ourselves. The plan was to have the ladies and the kiddos meet up with us a few hours later and the fishing tour would turn into an island hopping beach tour. And it did. We had a fantastic time boating into these remote beaches that were essentially just us. One of the half day tours was to a monkey sanctuary. We got to see them feed and care for vulnerable or injured monkeys and had a great afternoon there. I think you could see a little fear on my face and some excitement. One of our friends told us about a canyon freshwater swimming opportunity not too far from the house so we jumped in the car one day and went up and did that. Lori uh, being Lori, she jumped off the rocks into the water and it was nice and cool in there, the water was refreshing. It was a beautiful spot. We often spend six months or so away from Canada for the winter living internationally and so we frequently need to renew our visa. This year required leaving Panama, but it did give us an excellent opportunity to reconnect with some friends from Sierpe and also to reunite with Zorro, our jungle love number one. And I think he remembered us. Thanks for joining us, everyone, as we reminisce about the time we lived in Panama for six months. In our next video, we'll share with you the following year, which was the time we lived in Curaçao for six months. Curaçao is one of the neighboring islands between Aruba and Bonaire, just off the coast of Venezuela. So that was a unique experience. Hopefully that video will be coming out soon. My name's Air. I'm Lori. And we're Plan Free. Thanks you guys for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.